Good afternoon. It's actually really nice to be here. Uh, I've learned so much myself, and uh, the things I'm going to talk about today are actually three things. Uh, what are the characteristics of, of successful startups, and what you as banks, how can you work with the startups and support the good things in startups and learn from them, but also what parts of the organization should you involve when working with them? So, these are the kinds of things that you've seen all over these two days. People are thinking about you know, things like PSD2 and KYC and predictive modeling and all kinds of things. And uh, there are lots of opportunities for you, but also lots of challenges. And then some of you are thinking that, well, hey, maybe we could take the startups and work with them. Maybe they can give us something that we don't have. But some of you are also thinking that, well, most of the startups actually fail. So how can we really take them into our companies and really use them? Because they fail. So how can we use them uh, as something that uh, really builds our future? I say, yes, you can. But you need to understand what makes good startups really succeed. You really need to understand how can you support them in a way that they can succeed, but also how can you learn from the failures? Because lots of times the failures are as important as the successes. And also, how can you go beyond the individual benefits uh, of individual things or, or services and really get something that the whole organization and whole, the whole company can uh, benefit from? Well, let's look at startups. Why, why do they fail? This is an extensive study done on, on thousands of startups. And uh, the thing is that startups fail because they scale too early. You know, they write too many lines of code. They hire too many people. They, uh, they uh, take too much money from investors. They support too many device uh, models, uh, all kinds of things. They, they do stuff too early before they really know what to scale. And actually, when I was thinking about this, uh, I have a long background also in big companies. And um, I realized that this is probably the reason why a lot of the banks and big companies actually fail. You do stuff too early because it's too easy for you to, to scale stuff before you know what to scale. Well, the best startups, what do they do? What is that makes them really succeed? It is iteration. They iterate, they talk to customers, but they listen to customers. They go and code and they do the stuff, and then they show the solution, validate it, and learn some more and iterate and iterate. And that, that is the way they uh, find out solutions that are worth scaling. They don't scale them before they, they're worth scaling. There is actually a misconception that uh, a lot of times you hear that, uh, that entrepreneurs, uh, they succeed because they believe in themselves. Actually, the reason why startups succeed is that they find a customer who is willing to pay for the product, not because the entrepreneur believes in him or herself. Well, when you do the iteration, you learn a lot, but also there's a possibility of failing, but that's a good thing. It's not like it used to be that failing is bad, but from the failures, you do pivots, for example. We, in startups, call them pivots when you change the direction. You can learn so much about what should be done and what shouldn't be done, and then you can do the next version better. Um, Reid Hoffman, LinkedIn co-founder, uh, said that you should be embarrassed by, by, the, uh, by your products. If you are not embarrassed, you've launched too late. And that is sort of the attitude that a lot of startups have. They launch early. They want to learn from the market. They want to learn from the customers. Because if you iterate too, too, too much, you don't learn the things you can learn in the market. And then when you launch, you do the stuff again and again and again, so that you improve whatever you can provide for the customers. Of course, you know, as banks, 
you, you will say that, well, we have the precious uh, brand, we are not able to ruin that, and we have to take care of that. Well, that might be true, but that's another reason why you should work with startups. They can do that. They can test things in the market. They can do stuff for you so that you don't have to ruin your brand. And then you can reap the benefits of that work. So, the first thing, let the startups be startups. Let the entrepreneurs be entrepreneurs. Look for the results when working with startups. Don't look for the familiar ways of doing things. The entrepreneurial spirit and the drive is a great force. As banks, you can use that to your benefit because they can do stuff that you can uh, only imagine. They can do, as entrepreneurs, they're willing to go the extra mile and they, can, they will want to work for you and collaborate with you. So another thing that uh, a lot of times when I talk with banks, I hear that uh, they, uh, they have a specific problem that they want to solve with startups. So they, they ask me to, uh, to match make them with this perfect startup candidate can, can solve this particular problem. But the thing is that uh, this is what I call the band-aid approach. So you have a very small problem, or maybe a big problem even, but you're trying to look for a very specific solution. The thing is that that way you are actually not getting all the benefits that you can get from startups. They can probably solve that one particular thing, but they can always, you are only looking for that one small thing and you're missing out a lot of the other things that you can get from startups. So you get incremental improvements that will not take you very far. And yes, this makes a sense, a lot of sense for, for a lot of the big companies and, and, uh, and, and banks. Because you have the uh, procurement process where the startup is uh, just another item that you can put in, 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 into that. But the bad thing is that you don't really learn from the startups. You don't, you're not getting anything else. You're just getting that one small thing and that's it. So my advice to you is that don't do that. Don't do that. Make sure that you use the startups for much more. You can outsource the small thing or, or the big thing, that uh, specific problem that you have. You can outsource that to, a, to an existing partner, but use the startups to make a bigger change, make something that's actually giving your business new opportunities and bigger opportunities than before. You need to break the bad patterns. You need to break the ways you're used to doing stuff. Because startups are really good at that and they can help you to, to do that. You don't know what the future will, will hold for you. Yes, you know that, okay, in Europe, PSD2 is coming, you know that there's, there are a lot of technical opportunities and challenges. Uh, but still, there are even more stuff that you don't know about. And startups are really good at looking at that stuff and helping you to uh, get ready for that. And also, don't try to look only for, for a few startups. Work with as many startups as possible. The problem with the Band-Aid approach is that you tend to work only with one or two startups, but you never know if the startups are really good. You only know by working with them and work with as many startups as possible. With some of them, you end up partnering. With some of them, you end up just learning from them about new things. And you both will be happy about that. So my advice. Make sure that you actually work with the startups. Don't just uh, mingle in startup events or don't just uh, go to startup hubs to have fun with them or have interesting discussions. Nothing, no business comes out of that. Make sure that the business is your uh, first priority. Talk about, but also work with the business problems. Do hands-on work with them. Have the startups in your everyday work life. That's the only way to get the benefit, but that's the only way that you can get all the um, um, 
new business opportunities that are, that are waiting for you, for, for you to happen. So, who should work with startups in, in your companies? A lot of times you, you see that the uh, R&D and the innovation people are the ones who are working with the startups. And it makes sense because their, pro their uh, responsibility is to look for the new innovation processes and, and other stuff. But the thing is that if they're the only ones working on that, usually the business uh, comes in at too, at the, too late. And you should have the business there from day one. They should be giving the uh, themes. They should be giving the uh, KPIs. They should be giving the uh, goals for, for the collaboration. That ensures that uh, you actually have a possibility of making your business impact. You have a possibility of really making the uh, uh, startups do real work for you, beyond just demonstrations or, or prototypes, but really making money out of the collaboration. So the business should be driving that. But also, HR is really important. So, the big impact that the startups can have is in your business, but also in the way your people do their work. I had the list of the things uh, earlier, uh, the uh, PSD2s and KYCs and others. The thing is that um, you don't know what's going to happen. No one knows what's going to happen beyond them. And you need to prepare your people your employees to be to face the problems, to face the uh, challenges, to face the opportunities of the future. And if you only look at those single things, you miss the opportunity of really have, uh, being ready for the other things as well. And startups are really good at that. They can help you to uh, get prepared. They can help you to uh, uh, think outside of the box. They can help you to be more agile. They can help you with all of that. So the startup collaboration, you should have the business, but you should have HR as a very good partner there when developing all the future opportunities. Yes, the innovation, the R&D should be there as well, but it should be business driven very much. So. Focus on the business, but have the entire organization to be part of that. That is the way you'll get the real benefits, not just the uh, nice mingling at the events. So I'd like to leave you with a thought. In the end, startup collaboration is about renewal. Startups are renewing your business, the banking industry, with lots of things. Technologies, way, new ways of serving customers, new ways of uh, thinking uh, about the future opportunities, new ways of, uh, of satisfying uh, the business uh, um, areas and, uh, and the likes. But it's also about renewing the companies. It's also renewing the uh, banks. You're renewing your, your your people internally. How do they work? Do they work? Uh, you're renewing the way you're serving your customers, your business, and the startup collaboration is a really great way to do that. Thank you.